So we'll just wait another minute. Wait another minute or two as people are coming on. So just as people are coming on there, I'm just going to get my screen ready, just uh, share a few slides. Catherine might just tell me that you can see that okay when it yeah. comes up. See them slides now? Yeah. Perfect. I'm sure just wait another second and uh, we'll kick off then. We won't keep you too long, Chris, don't worry. All right, we've, um, <laughs> you've, you've timed it well here for nap time. We're on holidays and he's, he's just, we can't do anything now. It's holidays with a baby is slightly different than beforehand. So. That's probably true, yeah. <laughs> Every, everything, has to be planned, everything has to be planned around nap times. So. <laughs> Very good. Out for dinner last night, I thought we'd never get out of the restaurant. I thought I was going to pull the face of heart, but anyways. Oh, really? <laughs> That's just how bad it is, I suppose. Ah, it is not. Um, Right, so we'll make a start. Uh, so looks just after the after the half hour marks. So look, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, my name is Jack O'Connor. I'm the sales manager with uh, the Mahi team, so the Mark Animal Health Intelligence team, responsible for the technology room and portfolio in particular. So obviously, SenseUp falls into that. Um, just so just to note, uh, this is a series of uh, SenseUp Academy training or, or webinars, essentially just to get back up to up to up to scratch with using SenseUp and to maximize it ahead of the breeding seasons um, so it is probably worth to note as well who's behind SenseHub so the team across Ireland we have uh, Christy Gurk across the Midlands, Billy Heffernan more Munster Territory, uh, Kira Phelan, uh, Leinster but also as, as um, Tip and Water as well and Jack, John Lockman in the north and then the guys are supported by a great technical team of John Graham across the northern half, Shane Nolan across the kind of central half and also uh, Sabre for that matter and Cash and Heffern, Heffernan across the south um, so that's just one to note as well for guys because you might only know your on-farm sales representative and local uh, technical support but that essentially is the team that is behind Sense Hub. Um, as I said this is a, a series so a Sense Hub Academy training series. Today and this uh, webinar in particular is a refresher and maintenance so on you know getting back familiar using Sense Hub, uh, ensuring that Sense Hub is working correctly and if you have an Allflex gate as well or, or Sabre gate for that matter uh, that they are functioning correct ahead of the breeding season. Uh, Thursday so later in the week the guys will be doing a reproductive module and we'll also be doing a health module but we won't be doing that um, right now we'll, we'll leave that for a little bit later in the year so essentially we're just doing two uh, webinars to get back up to date and, and back up to speed with using sense of and maximizing for the breeding season i will take the opportunity as well uh, just to note our expanding portfolio so somatic cell count sensors you may have seen these at the national plow championship last year or the winter fair uh, last Christmas in the north. Um, so these are now in our portfolio and are a complete offering. So on the right of the image here, you see the silver box, which has all flex on it. This is our sense of somatic cell count sensor, essentially a California milk test, which will give an indication of the animal's somatic cell count within two minutes of cupping. Um, and I don't have another image there now, but there is a, a lighting system along the parlor, which will indicate uh, the somatic cell count level of that animal. And essentially this will all be connected information, so connected up to the cloud, so you can look at it retrospectively as well. But again, it'll allow a farmer to make uh, in parlor decisions related to that animal. Uh, we also have a sense of uh, milk flow meter, so that's a little black box that you can see just to the left of the sense of um, the sense of silver uh, somatic cell count system, and that essentially will measure butterfat protein conductivity, lactose, and milk yield as well. And again, that will be uh, connected up information. So I said it's a good opportunity to uh, inform you that this is our latest part or piece of uh, technology uh, to our portfolio. And again, there'll be more information on this over the next coming um, weeks and months. So do stay in touch with your on-farm sales representative if you're interested in that. We have the system gone in at the three pilot farms. Um, it has been sold previously to our acquisition, which was a couple of years ago. Um, so there, there's up to somewhere between 50 and 60 farms with the system uh, in, but we have recently put it into three pilot farms in the country, one in Kilkenny, Limerick and up the country towards Cavan. So we will be holding uh, on farm open days, probably in the month, in the summer months uh, for farmers to come and see the system, how it works and how it could potentially benefit your farm. 
So with that, uh, I'm going to hand over to Katrin, and Katrin is going to lead us off on today's webinar with regard to um, refresher and maintenance. So Katrin, over to you. Thanks very much, Jack, and everybody's very welcome here this morning. Um, so this morning we're going to go through, I'm going to play a video um, which touches on the maintenance and troubleshooting, uh, just to ensure your system is up and running to its best ahead of the breeding season. Uh, so this video is about five or six minutes long. And then after that, I'm going to go through the demo account where I'll touch a bit on breeding, breeding window, heat index, et cetera, uh, just to ensure that everybody's comfortable with with that side of things ahead of breeding um, as it as it seemed to come. Following the following on from that, we'll hear from Chris Tuffy. Chris Tuffy's um farmer in Sligo. I'll let him introduce himself closer to the time. But um, we're going to hear from Chris. I have a couple of questions to ask Chris. Um, as there's many people on this call or will watch these videos after that have had to intense up a week, um, a month or years plus. So um, it's just good to hear from Chris and his experience and any tips that he may have for um for users. So I'm going to play this video here now and we will get to the demo after. Welcome to the Sense Hub Academy on farm training. My name is Catherine Heffernan and I'm a customer and technical support manager with MSC Animal Health Livestock Intelligence. I'm going to cover the five points to ensure that you get the maximum potential out of your Sense Hub this breeding season. The first point is assigning and recalibration of collars. The second point is tightening of collars. Number three is troubleshooting your sense of system. Number four is heifer units and out blocks. Number five is tag maintenance. The first point is assigning and recalibration of collars. To assign a sense of collar, you press the magnifying glass in the right hand corner. You search for an animal. So in this particular example, we'll use animal number 72. We press the animal. Once you enter into her cow card, we then press the blue plus, this then allows you to assign the flex tag, press assign flex tag, press NFC and from here you scan the back of the sense of collar. When it comes to moving collars from one cow to another, if the animal is in your herd still, you need to search for her. So press the magnifying glass in the right hand corner search for the animal so in this particular example we're going to use cow 203 enter into her cow card press the blue plus and from here you can remove the flex tag press the save button in the right hand corner if the animal has left your herd this will automatically happen if you do not need to do so in advance when it comes to the positioning of a sense of collar please ensure that your collars are on correctly. For those who put collars on when cows were dry, cows may have lost some condition since. The simplest way to tighten a collar is to push the buckle, put the pin in through the hole and pull the end of your collar. Ensure that you're able to comfortably get three fingers in underneath at the top of the animal's neck and the gap at the bottom underneath isn't, isn't too big. When it comes to younger animals that may have grown since the collar was put on, loosen the buckle down the relevant amount of holes. Again, ensure that you can comfortably get your three fingers in the top and that the bottom is snug enough on the underneath of the neck. Ensure that the black clip is pushed right up to the top of the buckle to reduce the possibility of the collar falling off. When applying the sense of collar, ensure that the blue sense of reader, as you look at the cow, is on your right hand side and the cow's left hand side. Number three is troubleshooting your sense of system. So firstly, you need to ensure that you can log into the system. Your user login details will be, your login is your email address, your password is as it was set up on day one, unless you've changed it, and your farm ID starts with EU and is an individual number that's given to your farm. If you are receiving internal server error after this, please check that you have electricity power going to your sense of controller on the roof. The sense of controller can have two or three lights depending on whether you have an all-flex gate connected or not. The middle light is for power, the left-hand light that's pulsing is for connectivity, and the third light in this case is for the all-flex gate. 
Once you've clarified that you have two green lights on the sensor controller and you're still receiving the internal server error, you must check your internet. So connect your Wi-Fi to your laptop or to your phone and search through the internet on a web page to ensure that your internet is definitely working. Finally, if in doubt, plug it out. Wait about 10 seconds. Once it's plugged back in, about 15 minutes later, you should be able to access your sensor system. Number four is heifer units and out blocks. If you're receiving a DD connectivity failure on your phone, ensure that you follow the same steps as previously discussed. You must have two green lights and internet at your second unit. Once you're happy, things are set up correctly. Plug out the main power plug at your main unit, plug it back in again, and after about 10 or 15 minutes, you should be able to access and see your heifers or additional animals. For example, on this system, you can see the connectivity failure. This is what you need to watch out for. Please follow the steps as advised to ensure that your sense hub and your out units are working correctly. Once the sense hub collar or ear tag is applied to the animal, it takes seven days for the calibration for heat and four days for health. Animals must be coming in signal of the sense hub controller once within 24 hours to ensure to drop this information off. So for example, if you have heifers, you must bring them in signal of the sensor controller at least once a day for seven days in advance of the breeding season. Number five is tag maintenance. As you can see on this system, tag maintenance is a report within SenseHub. As we see here, there are 23 tags in tag maintenance. Unassigned on animal means there's a collar that has been assigned to the animal and it's moving out there but we don't know what actual animal that's on. In order to overcome this issue, if you have a sorting gate, you can sort the animal as tag maintenance. If not, go back out into your animal list. You scroll down, you can see on the right-hand side that flex tag is on the right-hand side. You can see the animals that have flex tags. Here, for example, animal number 72 does not have a flex tag. So if you take note of the animals that don't have a flex tag, I recommend drafting them out and reading the collar number on the back of the sense of collar. You can then follow the instructions as previously in this video as to how to assign it. We see we have some animals here that are outdated data. These animals are not in signal as in this particular example, the heifer unit is offline. So once the heifer unit is back online, we can then see that these animals will start to read again and will start to leave this list. It's important to keep an eye on your tag maintenance all the time to ensure that all animals are being read at all times. Okay, so that was the maintenance and troubleshooting video. So hopefully um, that, was quite, that was beneficial and you can take something from that. These videos will be available to watch afterwards if anybody needs to do so. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share my screen onto the demo account and go through a number of areas of breeding. So I'll just share here. Uh, Chris, can you give me the thumbs up if you can see my yeah. screen? No, that's okay. Uh, catching okay. you. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so with the demo or with your computer version of SenseHub, the, the link to get into that there is, you can see it there, st.scordairy.com. So 95% or if not more people generally use SenseHub on their phone. Um, but for the, for the purpose of today's demonstration, I will use the, the computer version. But if you do want to access it, that's the link you use and your login details are exactly the same as getting into your phone. So here in the home screen, we can see the animals in heat. Um, and as already mentioned here, we're going to focus solely on heat at the moment. And we'll, we'll come back to health uh, later in the year where we we'll focus more so on that. But here we have the, the animals in heat list. So this will start to be building up numbers every day now for everybody. Uh, numbers are probably increasing a lot. Um, so when it comes to the day you're going to start AI in or you're going to AI, like the first thing you look at 
is your heat index. So we can see our heat index here on the right hand side. And so the heat index ranges from 50 to 100. And um, the closer the number to, is to 100, the higher the chance the animal is in heat. So there's a number of things taken into consideration when calculating this number. And um, those being so the drop of rumination, the change of eating and the increase in activity. But also if collars have been on longer, longer periods, the number of heats the cow has had and also when the cow calf, that'll all come into consideration and drives that heat index. So typically you will typically you'll see most of your heat index numbers in the 90s. Um, but my rule of thumb with this is um, anything over 85, I wouldn't think twice I'd eye the cow, I wouldn't click into her graph. But if the cow was under 85, I click into her table uh, like this, say for example, 50-50, click into her table, populate it in the right hand side. This is normally done from, from the start once. And um, on your phone, you zoom in like a picture and you pull it over to today. So that's here. So for example, if this cow was under 85, I would click into her like this. And really what I'm looking for is so we see, as I mentioned, the purple is the drop in rumination. See the drop there in rumination. And then the orange one is the increase, which is your activity. Um, the, the green one then is eating. So I always look out for the, the rise in activity. And if I know there is no big particular event on the farm, like a TB test or vaccines, vaccination, um, and you see that rise in activity, I would go back and go to my breeding window and and then breed the cow. But you're probably talking about 2%, 3% of your animals will be under that 85, but it's it's that's kind of the guide to follow. Um, but we see the, the final thing on this graph to kind of conclude on it is that this is your heat behavior. So heat behavior rises up. Um, heat behavior is different to the, the heat index outside. Um, it's a different number. So we see here, this is 75 outside the cows in, in her 90s. So um, this all this all together drives the heat index outside. So we see that cow is 97. So that's, that was good, strong heat. So once you have your heat index, or once you've decided on your heat index, so you're happy, I'd be happy enough with all these cows. Um, you obviously can look at the days in milk to see how many days the cows have been calved um, as well. But once you're happy with that, from there, we look at the breeding window. So here I have the sex semen window and I have the conventional semen window. If you only have one, um, you can go into the settings on your phone and you can add the sex semen window. And if anybody has any trouble with that, uh, please feel free to get in contact with us. We can help you. Um, but you can expand the breeding window uh, by pressing the blue, by pressing magnifying glass. And if you touch these colored graphs on your phone, you're able to expand them also. So here, for example, we see um, we have this, this black triangle is our, at hours 12. So this is a total of, this breeding window is a total of 30 hours. So you're going to see the cows jumping and from, from peak activity, from when, that, when, peak, when peak activity is met and starts to decrease, that's when the cows will come on the list. So it's very normal to see animals jumping in the field and not see them in your animal list. And this, hour, this breeding window is 30 hours. So you can see this black triangle is moving along this uh, 30 hour window and she's currently at a 12 hours. So the top bar is sex semen, bottom bar is conventional semen and the green is the ideal time for insemination. So what you're trying to do is get that black triangle into in line with the bar that suits. So with sex semen, obviously you're going to be a lot more targeted and really, really try to get that green, uh, get that triangle into the green, the green bar. Um, on the bottom with conventional, you do have, from what we see is we, you do have a lot more time. Like anything, the green bar is a guide. Uh, you want to try to follow that guide as best you can. But for people who are AI and once a day, you're not always going to get the black triangle into the green, into the green section. Um, if that black triangle is here, um, it's still okay. Similarly, in the second yellow, it's okay. Once you start to go into this orange color, and your your chances are reduced, 
But if you haven't got the cow, um, I, I would still AI her, but I just probably wouldn't be giving her your best, your best straw. Your chances are obviously slightly lower. So there, that's that's how to how to read the breeding window. Once the animal once the animal finishes her heat, once this black triangle hits the end of this bar, the cow will leave the list. So she'll leave leave the list. You can't you can't get the animals on, off this list. But on your on your phone, uh, when you open into this animals list in heat list, there's a sperm symbol on the top. When you touch that sperm symbol, it takes out what animals um, are not eligible or are, have already been AI'd. So that comes in from ICBF. So twice a day, every day, Sense Hub calls out to ICBF and asks, is there any new data? So that new data being an insemination, a heat, an insemination, an animal sale, um, or um, a calf registration. So if there's new, if there is new data, it will it'll take it in. If not, um, you might see that see where it comes up. Um, no cloud sync, no herd management sync. Um, but don't worry, that doesn't mean your system's not working. It just means that the the there was no new data to come in. So when you press that sperm symbol in this list, it takes out any animals that have been AI'd because it knows its status. Um, and also in the back of your system, um, on the computer version, there's a voluntary waiting period. The voluntary waiting period is set as standard of 70. And that means any animal that is under 70 days will leave, filter your list, filter out when you press that sperm symbol. You can change that number yourself um, by pressing the farmhouse. This, this can only be done on your computer. By pressing the farmhouse, settings and you can go into your voluntary waiting period and you can change it here it set as 40 there so whatever you want to change it to for your particular system um, you can do so here but don't worry if if it's not changed it doesn't mean that the animals won't appear in this list they'll still be here it's just for that particular filter filter filtering option so they'll be they'll be here so we can see the different sim symbols here as well so we have a rocket um, and a rocket is the status of the cow is ready. So a ready cow, um, as we've seen in the voluntary waiting period, would be any animal in this particular system that is over 40 days calf or over the set number of days in uh, days of age for a heifer for this example. So she's a rocket, she's ready. We see the sperm symbol, the green sperm symbol identifies that the cow has already be, has been inseminated. Uh, we see the birthday cake. Uh, so this is a heifer that's obviously not, uh, she's not a rocket, so she's not ready, eligible for AI. Uh, but that's, again, not to say um, you can't. It's just, this is just, it's just, it's just the status of this, the cow in the back end. And then the egg timer is a fresh cow. Um, so this is generally animals under 30 days calved. Um, will have have the have the symbol. So if you edit your voluntary waiting period, you can then filter these out if necessary. Um, so I'll, I'd also like to mention there is a chat function, and what we'll do is you're you're welcome to type into the chat function, and um, after at the end we I can answer the questions on on this. Um, so just moving on then to the the, the reports for for reproduction, which are most relevant right now. So you can access these by clicking reproduction. Um, in the left-hand corner of your, your screen, you can there's a list and you can enter into the reproduction list. So the animals in heat is what we were in already. Also note that when you're looking at Sense Hub on your phone, if you turn off the setting to turn to, to allow your screens to turn over um, landscape, you can, if you look at the animals in heat list and turn it landscape, there's more, there are more boxes and there's more data that you can actually see. So it'll actually give you days since last inseminated, et cetera. You can see there's more, there's more options. It just can't fit on the, the, the screen when it's in portrait. Um, so your animals in heat list is what we've been just looking at. You can add these to your home screen if you wish. Um, on your phone, if you go into this list and you swipe your finger left, you can add them to favorites, which makes makes them come onto your home screen. So yeah, ha we have here the anisterous cows. So anisterous cows is will be quite relevant at the moment. Um, 
So any estrus cows is technically your pre-breeding report. So you must have collars on cows over 30 days in order for the system to populate. Um, so how this works is when a cow calves, if she's a collar on, if a cow calves when she and has a collar on, um, from there, it's 50 days. The cow doesn't have a cycle for 50 days. She'll populate into this report. So what that's doing is it's actually giving the cow the chance to have two quite long cycles. Um, and then it's saying she's not have, she hasn't had one, she'll be in this list. Um, or like subsequently, if a cow has a heat, so if she, let's say, for example, a cow has a heat at 21 days and she doesn't have one um, for 30 more days, she'll be in here. So this is constantly populating in the background for you. You don't have to input into it or do anything with it. Um, just keep an eye on it. Obviously, present these animals to your vet to be treated or handled um, or whatever your protocol is. And once the animal starts to cycle again, she'll leave this list automatically. So the beauty of this is this is happening all the time in the background and um, you can then get these animals back into your system as, as early as you can. So you want to just benchmark a few times throughout your breeding season to, to act on this list. Um, so yeah, you can add, the, add these to your home screen. I can add it here with the star, or you can add it by swiping, swiping over left on your on your symbol on your phone. So then the next one then here is irregular heats. So this is where cows have three or more cycles in the last 30 days. So you can see here a day since last heat. Um, and we see that these animals have had three or more cycles in 30 days. So these animals generally um, are your cystic type animal and also need to be treated accordingly. Once their heats settle down and fall back into normal play as they as uh, one every month, um, this these animals will leave the list. So again, you don't actually have to do anything. Um, the, I suppose the most important things for these reports is that the status of your cows are kept up to date. I suppose that is the, the benefit of being linked with ICBF that when a calf is registered, the cow is seen as a fresh cow, so therefore her status is correct. Um, so then there's two other reports then in reproduction. These ones will come into play later on as the breeding season commences. We have um, pregnancy probability is one that will more than likely come first. <clears throat> so your pregnancy probability, this is a report which um, it, identifies see, what animals have been bred and how long it has been since they've bred. So this ranges from low, medium, hot, this ranges between low, medium and high. So an animal um, that has been inseminated over 21 days, uh, between 21 and 27 days is low, over 21, 27 days is medium and over 60 days is high. If that animal has a heat or signs of heat at any stage, it'll take her down a rank. So this is just a good guide as to see how you're getting on. So once you're through your first 21 days, I know people look at them on other systems, but it's a, it's a nice live one. Again, this is coming from the system and from the, the status of the cow after being marked as bred. And um, so this will be this will be what the, the report, the next report that you'll be looking at as the breeding season drives on. And then finally, in terms of reproduction, we have suspected for abortion. So this report comes into play once the animals have been scanned or marked as pregnant. So once an animal has been marked as pregnant and she has a strong heat, the animal comes into this list. Now, obviously, this list, um, if, for example, uh, weather is really dry and animals are changing diet very regularly and there's a lot of change happening um, that can obviously cause animals to come in here so what I would say is don't panic uh, if you do see animals in here because it is a calculated report you can um, add animals in here if necessary but it, you can these animals these animals can be removed out of this list by clicking into the animal and pressing the blue plus within her status. So um, she just needs to be confirmed. Um, but again, this is for later. And um, I suppose you kind of need to 
keep an eye on it, take it, like take it with a pinch of salt. But again, you're going to know your farm and your management, if there's any management changes on farm at any particular time that may have caused some of these um these animals to, to come in here as a result. And please don't forget, as the season goes on, 7% of animals that are pregnant show signs of heat. So uh, it's and it's actually quite a high figure, but it's it is a, a research figure and um that can also uh, cause animals to enter into that report. Um, finally, then in terms of reproduction, um, so all animals in all animals within sense over set a threshold of fifty, which is perfect for for the dairy system. What I would say is sometimes sometimes heifers can show let can show lower heats. Um, not not always. It's very farm specific, but I suppose it's just to keep an eye out from now till breeding or till you start breeding that if you see animals coming up here within the system consistently in the 60s or 50s, um, you can change the, the threshold. We don't recommend it. And if you do want to do it, please touch base with um, some of the technical team and we can chat through with you. Um, but it, the option is there. But I suppose more so if you have animals that you're tr you've treated, um with if you're if you're treating animals with hormones um to get them to cycle uh to cycle again or to 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 uh, treat treat the animals in the anaestra support if you go into the farmhouse you can actually do this on your phone by going into groups so if you go into groups for example what i would recommend is uh creating a group um and calling it treated cows for example I'm going to call it group number nine um, and call these milking or sorry yeah. and if we just edit the the threshold there for these uh these ones say 40 for example for the treated animals so the idea of this is if you treat animals or hormones they can be calling the walls or they might not do anything obviously we're we're changing the normal cycle. So um, if you've treated animals, I would recommend just putting them in here and just dropping dropping the threshold. Um, you can then add, add the animals in. Um, if, you've, if you have quite a few, you can go into events here and press the blue plus. Um, you can then change group and put them into animals and start to enter your list if necessary. Um, alternatively, you just have a couple of animals. If you go to your home screen, press the blue magnifying glass, enter in the any cow that you're going to move, press the blue plus, and you can then change group here and move the cow. Um, but again, that's just, just for treated animals. I'd recommend it just so you don't um, just increase your chances of actually getting them. So that's um, so that's really all from me here on on the the Sense Hub demo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, invite Chris to come on, and maybe Chris, you want to give yourself introduce yourself there, and I just have a couple of questions there to ask you. And um, for everybody else, please um, add in your questions, and we'll we'll go through them at the end. So I'll stop sharing that. Okay, go ahead. Hello, everyone, and uh, thanks, thanks for everyone for thanks for MSD and all flex for having me on. Um, I'm a dairy farmer in County Sligo. I'm milking uh, 150 cows on a lease block of ground, so a fully spring calving. So uh, this year was the first year we went over 90% in six weeks. So it was it was pretty busy. So we're pretty much finished up calving now. We're our third season this year with the since of collars we put them in um we put them in at christmas 2020 so our first breeding season was 21 with them so we couldn't be happier with them we also have the gate so so far so good with the collars so we're about we're going to be starting breeding the last days of uh the last days of of april so we're getting geared for that at the moment and um as Catherine said, we're keeping a very close eye there on the Nistra's report at the moment, which is the the big one now these days. So excellent, Chris. You forgot to mention that you're also the FPD Farmer of the Year. Yeah, 
yeah, thanks very so, much. So congratulations on that. Um, so guys, we really, as I said, want to invite you on here to talk uh, or to ask us a couple of questions. On this call, like, we have farmers that have sent over a number of years, we have farmers that have sent over a year, etc. So like, I suppose from your own point of view, like, what advice would you give someone who has just put it in and that they're going into their first year of breeding with the system? I just, just let it do its job. Um, the first year, I suppose I had the slight advantage. The first year is that we had it in for pre-breeding. So we were watching the cows come on the bull and they were coming up on our phone and it gave us great confidence. So we landed day one of breeding season. We had 100% confidence in the system. But if I was only after putting in the system the last couple of weeks, knowing what I know now, I just let the system do its job, trust it. It, it, is, it is unbelievably accurate. It's going to be more accurate than any tail paint or any teaser bulls or anything like that. So if I was just have to put in, my advice is just let the system do its job. Most people don't start breeding for another two or three weeks anyways, so it'll be, it has time to gather the information and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be ready to go for the, for the first week of breeding season. Yeah, absolutely. And you're seeing, are you seeing big numbers now at the moment in the animals and heat list? Yes, the 16th of day was our busiest day, which is great, which is about three weeks out from the first week of our, would be week one, they'll be coming back in heat again. We do, we, we are, have moved away from conventional dairy AI. So it's great. All them cows, they're February calf cows. Some of them could be on their second cycle. So it's setting them up brilliantly for our, um, for sex semen usage. Um, so 50% of the herd will be bred to sex semen. Um, and the other 50% are, will be bred to uh, to beef. And all repeats will be AI to beef. So the, the, I don't, there's, the research out there now is pretty showing that the collars are very accurate for, for picking up the, the timing of, of AI on the sex semen. We got 60% conception for service on sex semen last year. So it's it's so important that we know which cows have had a pre-breeding heat this far out to get the accuracy on the sex semen. It's too expensive for it not to be not to be accurate with it. Mm -hmm. And did you you use you use quite a bit of sex semen last year? What are your criteria, Chris, in terms of um Picking your cows for sex semen. Well, the first thing is is the basics. It, is the cow has to be quite a wild calf. So any cow we're we're looking at, she has to be forty two days out at a minimum from from uh, forty two days calf before she's she's inseminated at least. So we're pretty much looking at pretty much looking mainly at the February calf and cows. Any cow that has an issue, we rule her out. We'll do a milk recording pre pre uh, pre breeding. Any cow with high cell count had has has lame. Anything like that is gone straight away. Now we might use one conventional bull. Maybe if we had a cow that's I wanted to get a heifer calf off, and she mightn't just be perfect. Her cell count might be a touch high, but no. Um, the other thing too, they would just go into it. Like our herd is 200, 200 EBI or over. It, so. We don't breed any cow under 165 in EBI, any cow with low milk sub-index, any cow with a low fertility sub-index, and then we go down into production. No cow under 375 uh, protein is bred or any cow with any low production, any issues. So the sex team has been brilliant. Like a few mm -hmm. years ago, we were as likely to get a, a heifer calf off our worst cow as our best because we're just <laughs> across the board with, with uh, conventional semen. And then yeah, we would be doing the repeats to, to conventional too. And then they could get a half bull calf off our best cow like it. But now it's so targeted. Our cows are 260 of an EBI this year because we've taken out the bottom percent. The one nine on protein, which is their, their genetic potential is to 4.15 protein when they hit the herd. Like that's a cute, that's huge for us. It's, it's going to drive on the herd. Like we were talking about genetic gain this this 10 years, like and all of a sudden sex emails came in and just we, we thought our genetic gain was starting to slow down. All of a sudden, sex semen has come in and given it a real kick again to, to drive on the herd. Yeah, absolutely. It speeds, speeds things right up, doesn't it? And Chris, um, was there any additional benefits that you saw when you went into your second year of sense of as opposed to your first? I know you had it, you did, you obviously seen the benefit of the pre breeding because you had it in time. So, was there anything that was an added extra to you? Well, the biggest thing is we're, we're getting slightly tighter every year. So the second, we're in our second calving season now after. And the biggest thing we've noticed this year is we didn't get that lull in mid-season calving. Is that our, 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 our heat, our, our calving has just really just driven out this year. We, we have a no tail end really of calving, bar two cows. Um, 
we noticed that that's that what we noticed year one and year two is our, our first three weeks were pretty much just maybe three or four percent ahead of when we were just at tail paint. But the real the collars come into a tone from six, from three to six and six to nine, where where we would have noticed a drop off before, you know, you go down into twos and two to ones and twos in calving season, where now is our calving is an awful lot more consistent. I would say what was happening to us before, and I say it's happening on every farm in the country, but who doesn't have collars is you can't sustain the breeding that they're constantly watching cows, teaser bulls, trying to pick up cows morning and evening. So what's happening now with the collars is, is if there's days I'm not there, this, the system runs the same. We have the drafting gate. So that's the biggest thing we've noticed is, is the calving has just finished out a lot quicker this, this year. Um, especially the second three weeks we're busy now. We, uh, we had no lull. There was, uh, and there were a lot of beef calves, which is great because we, we were getting good money for them this year, which was a massive addition. So as I said, we're just over the 90% this year in, in six weeks. And like I think most farmers who will be on this or who will, will know, you'll know yourself, Catherine, you're a dairy farmer. You'll, you'll look out there into the field in April and there'll be four or five cows left a calf. And that's gone now as we've, we've we, we've taken the first year we took four weeks off our breeding season because we used to leave bulls out and it was messing really where now we've eliminated the stock bulls it's 100 percent AI so it's allowed us to really tighten up the tail end of our cabin we're down to 12 11 weeks breeding last year we're we'll down to 10 weeks hopefully this year and um i'm, I'm anticipating we'll get similar if not better results with, with a shorter breeding season yeah so you've kind of nearly almost done answered my last question then which is we often get but i asked the question uh did you get did you see an increase in your overall breeding performance in your first year yeah so, we, yeah it's it's the second three weeks is massive there's no repeats missed it's 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 the amount of like we used to be going on there mess with chin balls and teaser balls and well, we used to be keeping these old cross these, these young crossbred bulls trying to pick them up trying to pick up cows and heat and, and sure they were they'd follow anything like it, it, it's the second three weeks is massive. Uh, that's that's um, it, it picking up repeats is unreal with, with the collars. And that's the biggest thing I've seen with, with her, similar EBI to mine, uh, who don't have sit collars in. And we're starting to notice every a few years ago in, in our discussion group, I'm, I'm in a fairly good discussion group called the West Away. Two or three years ago, there's nobody had collars on, maybe one or two herds. I'd say next year, nearly the full herd will have. Um, well, have I mean, I'd say the vast nearly them all are, are since sub collars, they'll all have them in because they're seeing the results on the ground from the guys who have them. And when you put the results up, you can you can you can see the guys who have the collars, they're finishing out their cabin far better. Super Chris, thanks so much for being so open and honest. I have a number of questions in here which I might come back on um, and you might you please might be better answered by you. Um, so I, I'll go through some of these here now. Um, so if a cow is falling outside, just outside the green, can you still serve her? So I suppose for me, my advice is um, with sex semen, yes, you want to try aim for green. Obviously, timing is a lot more crucial there. Um, with your conventional semen window, you do have a lot more time. Um, obviously, green is your guide if you can get into it at all. That's that's the most important thing. Don't get too hung up on it. Um, you know, you do have a lot, you do have a lot of you have a lot of time, I suppose. And that's the beauty of being able to see where the where that particular cow is sitting in her in her cycle, because I suppose you know when we watch cows or observe cows, is it her first jump or is it her last jump? So um look, either either side of the the, the yellow is okay too, but as I said previously, um in the in that kind of orange colour is where you know your your chances are are, are reducing um a lot more. Um we have a question here. Is there any way of filtering out cows for sex semen use, e.g. E e e e cows over a certain EBI, number of heats, pre-breeding, lactation number, etc.? This will be handy to separate. So, um, as you know, we are linked with ICBF and we do have the agreement there with them. And down the line, there is going to be a lot more. Uh, there will be a lot more information coming. So um, it's not here. Can't do it right now. But um, it's absolutely something that is, is in the pipeline. Um, so let's see what else I have. 
Chris, there's a question. Any advice? We kind of touched on it. Uh, any any advice on how you how you select your cows for sex team? And so you kind of you kind of touched yeah. touched on that one. And are you actually are you quite strict on your uh, sex team and timing? Um, yes. Well, we're we're twice a day AI, which is which I, I think is, is vital. Um, but I, I noticed, and I know the question came in there about the bar, or that we're noticing majority, very rarely a cow on twice a day AI will fall outside that, that um, sex semen bar or the, the window. Like it's, it's, it's normally with, with the twice a day AI, you have, you have a lot of scope there. Some cows might be slightly outside of it very rarely. Um, but on, on the selection, yeah, we're, we're, we can be pretty aggressive now. Um, you know, set your criteria, and um, as I said, cows are problems. To stay away from them if they had any issues. Again, we we'll scan the cows now. That the I man is or the sorry, the vet is booked for our Thursday morning, which will be will will be all our February calvers, any of them that are in estrus. Um, that's what the seventy five percent of the herd now is being looked at, and any cows there might have any issues or any worries about that. We won't breed them. Like, because mm -hmm. we've reduced it down to 50% of the herd, we can be very selective within that. Yeah. No, we've actually noticed the best cows, anyways, they will come in heat. They'll come regularly. That, that's the other thing. What happens if your best cow comes in heat three days before your, your mating start date? I will still, but <laughs> we'll, we'll leave her. We'll leave her. She'll look at She's still a February calf. Or she'll be grand. Don't look at it. Don't look no. at it a few days in advance. Um, I have another question. Okay, if um, I have an AI man calling to the farm, can he log in to, uh, and see the same information as me? <clears throat> so yeah, they can. Um, you can set up users, uh, additional users or, um, on the system. Um, you need to do that on the computer version of Sento. So if you log in, uh, the settings tab in the bottom left corner will allow you to add a user. Um, it invites them then as a user, an external user, and they can set up their own logins. So therefore, if down the line that wasn't your AI man anymore and you didn't want them to have access, you have control and you can um, knock that person um, off from accessing the system. Um, I have a question here. Can you bring can you bring up a report of all cows that have shown sites of heat so you can pick out the cows for sex semen? Yes. Um, again, it's there's probably two things that can't be done on your phone, and that's one of them. Um, how do you do that? Um, you know, I actually think I'll just show it because it is it's a very, very good question. Um, so again, maybe for some of those who come on a little bit later, um, the, the I'll just share this again. The link, um, the link for accessing in your computer, you can see it there is st.scrdairy.com up at the top. Um, and your logins are the same on as your phone. And if you, you want to access, if you want to get that list, you press the farmhouse and you press events here. And this is all events that has, have happened in your system. So if you press name, uh, you can filter these accordingly. So there you have your system heats, you have your dates and you have your animal ID. And um, you can also see the strength of your heat, which is quite beneficial. And then if you want to, if you, you can bring this into an Excel sheet, if you want to tailor it more for any reason, you can press export as CSV. But it is, um, it's a good question um, in from in there on that one. Um, I've, I'll fin we'll finish up soon. Um, okay, any, okay, a question. Any advice or experience with using collars with the y wave program using, i.e. using heat records to bring uh, cows bowling a week before me, uh, meeting start date into the first week with hormones. So, Chris, have you ever used the Huawei program I, in the past? I don't use the Huawei, but I know one fellow who who uses on quite a large herd of cows with the collars, and, and he has a, he, he worked perfectly for him. He, yeah. he he record. I don't know. Did he record the heat? So whatever. It's three weeks in advance as they're coming on a bull, and, and then mm -hmm. he knew exactly when to give them the shot of estimate to tighten them in. So I think yeah. he brought he brought week one. Or, sorry, he. he and we, he brought week two pre-breeding into week one and week three into two to tighten up his calf and window. And um, yeah, it seemed to work perfect for him on, on, with the collars. Yeah, um, no, I do. I do. So see, so there are some people that do use it. And I suppose really what they're using is this list in front of me. So yeah. they're pulling this list. Um, and I suppose this is how you this is how you would get the benefit of it. Pulling out this list um, and obviously 
uh, going from that, that three weeks um, in advance. So taking this information and using it, um, using it accordingly. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, I have one question then. Um, if I put colours on a couple of weeks ago, if I put colours on a couple of weeks ago, do I need to put tail paint on? Chris, I'll let you answer that because I suppose you've, you've experienced well, you won't have the pre the full pre breeding benefits, but uh, not for breeding season. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. You'll uh, your your system will, will be up and running. I know a neighbour of mine is to start buying the system there. It's going in this week, and I, I told him the same. He might he might tail paint for the pre breeding or do a pre breeding scan because he, he doesn't have the he won't have the needs to support. He'll obviously have it for every year after. But for the breeding season itself, no. You'll notice if you put the collars on this week, by next week you'll have by the end of next week you'll have confidence in the system. You'll as you see the cows coming in heat, you will uh, you'll see it coming up in the system. Like you know, it, it that's what gave me the confidence. Year one was uh, seeing it working in before breeding, and uh, yeah. yeah, I I wouldn't bother for it. But if you did want to do a pre-breeding, you might need a bit of paint if you want to do a pre-breeding or. Um, or you could do a, a pre-breeding scan if you didn't want to do that. But from from now, from next year on, you you'll have the. I, I think the needs the reports is, is the beauty about the about the system, like even the probable pregnancy. We we do scans, thirty days after insemination to, to, to check for to see pregnancies, and uh, the system is brilliant, like for, for things like that. You're using the pregnancy probability report yeah. for that. Very, and we actually we can use it through the drafting gate. So we'll draft any cow that's over 30 days AI that hasn't come in, hasn't uh, repeated. Mm -hmm. And how you just put in the go into your reports and the gate and it lost actually draft it. And once we put in on our um on our, our agri net on the phone, it'll go straight across and the cow will come off the report if she's in calf or not. So you might pick up, I think maybe four or five percent might have lost embryos or dead embryos. That's what we're looking for. The report yeah. is brilliant for that. Like you're, you're picking them up nice yeah. and early then. Excellent. Um two more questions here. Um we'll finish then. Um if a cow is on her own in a paddock for whatever reason and she comes into heat, will the sense of show up on the collar? Yeah, so sense of is is it's machine learning, so it, it monitors and measures the animals individually and it learns every day from those animals. So like we often get asked the question, does, does Sensor pick up a silent heat? And I suppose what's a silent heat? It's just something we don't see. So similar to that cow, if there is a cow on her own, her behavior is going to change. Like her, her activity is going to rise, um, even if she's not exactly jumping, but she's going to be, you know, out of sorts, she's going to be moving more. Her eating is going to change. And as a result, her rumination is also going to drop. So that would identify then that that animal, her, her behaviors have changed, which means that that animal will, will show her show her heat um, on that. And then um, I have one more question here, if there's nothing else, that, if there, nobody else has any other further questions. Is there any checks that should be done on my gate pre-breeding? So what I recommend is um, just follow your maintenance, ta maintenance task for your gate. There is a really good video which is available um, it's available on our YouTube channel, um, a video done by John Graham last year. It's definitely worth watching ahead, um, ahead of the season. And uh, it's just, it touches on maintenance. And I would just say, just start, just draft out of it in advance. Just keep drafting out of it in advance um, to ensure all is okay. And that video is quite beneficial if, if, you need, if anybody would like to see it. So with that, um, that seems to be the last question that has come in. Um, again, I would like to thank Chris uh, for joining us today and giving his honest, honest opinion, 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 opinion on, on, his, on his experience uh, and um, on being open about his farm. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for joining. Um, I know it's a busy time and we really appreciate you coming on. We can share, this will all be shared afterwards with you and you can access these videos in the future if necessary. So thank you very much. And um, I hope you all have a lovely day and please get in touch if you're stuck or have any questions.